Algebra 2 CRAM, New York State Algebra 2 Regents, Common Core, Basics, Trigonometric Functions, Concept Number 7, Standard Position, and Cosecant. All right, so basically what I want to communicate to you is that the odds of someone doing exactly what you tell them to do is pretty slim to none. Okay, but I guarantee that if you cram with me, you'll become an Algebra 2 master. What we're doing here is so effective. I'm coaching you to turn your wants and desires of getting an A or perfect test scores into a new paradigm. I want to include everyone who needs a boost in Algebra 2. If I could stick every math student with a syringe containing a healthy dose of eye-opening awareness of their inner mathematical genius, I probably would. I know that sounds a bit scary. But inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com to get your healthy dose of Algebra 2. You have lots of peers, classmates, and colleagues who could also really benefit from this cram session. So tell them to inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com so that they too can purchase this entire cram session, okay? And you'll be glad that you spread the word because they'll make great study buddies. The concept of cramming often gets a bad rap. Um, but what people are actually thinking of is hurrying, which is a result of fear and can consequently be destructive to your learning process. We're not hurrying here, we're cramming, there's a difference. Hurrying is jam-packing tons and tons of unorganized information into your mental, spiritual DNA over a tiny amount of elapsed time, whereas cramming is taking quantum leaps in your understanding in what seems like an instant. All right, so let's delve into the concept of standard position and the cosecant function. Standard position and trigonometric functions. When an angle theta is in standard position, the cosecant function is defined as, I'll give you a moment to think and definitely press pause if you need a moment. All right, so hopefully by now you are able to arrive at an answer. And if you watched the first cram session in this particular series, you would have known the concept of standard position because we laid it out in um, concept one, okay? But if not, that's totally fine. I'm not going to hold it against you. What we're going to do is a quick review. All right, so an angle theta in standard position has the following features. Its vertex is located at the origin in a Cartesian coordinate plane at zero. Okay. Its initial side ray falls on the positive x-axis and its terminal side ray terminates in quadrant one. So notice thetas or angles in standard position are acute. And when I say acute, I mean their measurement is between the quadrantal angle zero degrees and 90 degrees. And when I say quadrantal angle, in case you're not familiar with that term, what I mean is that the terminal side ray of the angle falls on either the x-axis in the positive or negative direction, or the y-axis also in the positive or negative direction. So some examples of quadrantal angles, especially the one that I just mentioned, is zero degrees, 90 degrees, 270 degrees, 180 degrees, my bad, and 270. Then if you were to continue in circular motion uh, or going counterclockwise, this would be 360 degrees and so forth, okay? All right, you could also have negative quadrantal angles if you travel um, clockwise. But traveling counterclockwise, that's our normal direction of flow on a Cartesian coordinate plane as it relates to angles, okay? All right, and so the terminal side ray that terminates in quadrant one is going to be important for us. We're gonna call that, um, we call it R for short. Okay, so there goes our terminal side ray. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're arbitrarily going to choose this point P 
along the terminal psi rate, and this point P is what actually simplifies finding all Cartesian coordinates in a situation like this. I mean, not all Cartesian coordinates, all the trigonometric functions of this specific angle theta. I'm going to show you why, okay? Because we have this P, this ray is no longer a ray. It becomes a line segment. And our point P cuts it off at about here. Okay, it's arbitrary. It could have been here, there, anywhere you choose, okay? And um, we're going to say that our point P goes to the extent of its x-coordinate because it does. So we'll cut off our initial side ray right here at, at x and then we're going to signify the level that it rises to by our y-coordinate. And so what we've essentially done is we've resolved this line segment into its x and y-coordinate and what we have is basically a triangular formation, a right triangular formation of that which at that I mean, which we're going to indicate right here, okay? All right, so catch up with me. I'm sure some of you are already ahead of me mentally because I know you're all genius. That's, that's fine, that's great. All right, so we've established that, okay? And the la what I want to um, make you realize is that let's say our angle was in quadrant two, three, or four, depending on where the quadrant is, the x-coordinate is going to be negative and positive, specifically positive in quadrants 1 and quadrants 4, but negative in quadrants 2 and quadrants 3. The same for the y-coordinate, okay? It's going to be positive in quadrant 1 and quadrant 2, but negative in quadrant 3 and 4. But what about our ray R? Well, this guy, what it becomes is the hypotenuse, or the longest side of the triangle. Y is obviously opposite theta, and X is going to be the adjacent sides of theta. But R isn't considered as negative or positive because it's not a coordinate. Rather, it's a measurement. R is equivalent to the square root of the X coordinate squared plus the Y coordinate squared. And as you can see, this is just a play on the distance formula if the difference is between the point um, at the origin, that's why it's in standard position and that's why it's so easy to find the trigonometric function of an angle in standard position and the distance between the origin, which is zero, zero, and x, y, okay? So this is just a variation of the distance formula. But we're just finding the distance of r, not considering the direction or the location as we do for y and x, okay? All right, so I think I've chatted you up a bit. So based on these facts, we can say that the cosecant of theta is basically going to be equivalent to R, the hypotenuse, the terminal side segment, or the longest side of the triangle, divided by Y. Okay, the side, the Y coordinate opposite theta. Or you can say, because this does look very familiar, that the cosecant of theta is equivalent to 1 divided by the sine of theta, okay? And why is that? Because you can see that this is just the reciprocal of the sine of theta, or it's just a flipped fraction with regard to the sine of theta, where the sine of theta is equivalent to y over R, okay? So basically, um, in case you're a little thrown off by the flip fraction concept, whenever you have a numerator and you are dividing it by a denominator that's also a fraction, all you have to do is take the numerator and multiply it by the reciprocal of the denominator. So the reciprocal of y over r is r over y. And what you're going to get is r over y, okay? So that's why the cosecant of theta is considered the reciprocal of um, the sine of theta. Or you can call it a co-function with regard to the sine of theta. And this is basically our answer, okay? So the cosecant function of the angle theta is defined as r divided by y 
or the hypotenuse, the longest side, the terminal side ray, divided by the y-coordinate of point P, or the y-coordinate of the side opposite um, the angle. And when I say y-coordinate, it's not going to be zero. That's why it's so easy to define um, the trigonometric function, because the initial starting point, starting level is zero, you don't have confusion when I say y-coordinate or x-coordinate. There's only one other than the opposing zero value, okay? All right, so as you can see, comprehension of this material is not difficult at all. And in the short amount of time it takes to complete this entire cram session, you'll be prepared to answer a battery of questions in Algebra 2, okay? So be sure to inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com again to order this complete cram session and thanks for tuning in.